where we have one n. One n is fixed. One n is free. Is equal to two l. Okay, is equal to two l. So we go back. That's where we is equal to two l. So for this case, the 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 radius of curvature is in this direction. Is the same of if we draw the road. Uh, rotation about y, right? So the curvature, or yeah, the curvature, or how how could how how can I say the center of curvature is about the y-axis. So you have to find i y y. Okay. So be, because if if I sorry, if I were to draw the rotation in y, right? This curvature over here. I'm highlighting now, and this curvature have the same so-called curving direction. Okay, so it's about i y y. Okay, now how is this important? I will I will write later. I will show you how why why the i y y and i z z is important. I will show you later. Okay, so what we see over here. What does LE equal to 0.7L means and what does LE equal to 2L means? Okay. The smaller the equivalent length, the more resistant to buckling. I repeat again, the smaller the equivalent length LE, the more or the smaller the equivalent length, the higher resistance to Buckley. Okay. Now, why is that? Okay, so if I will recall what happened last week. Okay, so we are going to focus on L equal to 0 0.7, L equal to 2. Right, so over here we have LE is equal to 2, right? This example that we have done, that we restrict our critical stress to be, uh, come on, our critical stress to be 250 and our equivalent load to 200. So we realize that L over R ratio is 4.433. So 4.4 or 4.43 is over here. So if the L over R ratio is 4.43, you, you realize that we have to analyze buckling when the L over R ratio is smaller, it's 4.43, okay? This is for equivalent length of two. If we were to use an equivalent length or not use, and when our structure is one is pin and one is what? One is fixed. Our L over E ratio is now, or, or our L is 0 0.7. So buckling will occur later. Buckling will occur at what? 1 to 6.9 L over R ratio. Okay. So th this condition number three has a higher resistance to what? Condition number one, okay, where we have our structure now. So going back to our problem now, right? So the XY plane is more resistant to buckling, whereas the LE on the right hand side is less resistant. It's because of how we fix the structure at the top at point A. Okay. So now this question wants us, so we, we, we know the more the xy plane is more likelihood to uh, or less likely to buckle whereas on the right hand side where we have our xz plane it is more likely to buckle in that direction now what we can control is this okay we have in this question we have not specified the a and b dimension yet okay we uh, i repeat again we have not specified the A and B direction. Okay. So for this example, what we want to do is we want to make sure 
that the resistance for buckling in the X and Y plane and the ZX plane are the same by controlling the A and B dimension. You understand what I mean? So I want the resistance to buckling at this plane, XY plane, and the YZ plane to have the same resistance. If it's going to buckle, both of these planes are going to buckle at the same time. Currently, it's not. All right? Currently, right? X, Y plane has more resistance to what? Buckling. Okay. So the only way that we're going to control that is we're going to control the A and B dimension. Okay. We're going to control the A and B dimension. Anyone, any questions so far? Okay, so let, let, let me summarize. X, Z plane will buckle first. X, Y plane will not buckle with a known load, okay? Right, or, 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 or X, Z plane will buckle at a lower load, Y, Z plane will buckle at a higher load. What we want to do now is we want one load that both X, Y, uh, both X, Y plane and X, Z plane will buckle at the same time, okay? Right. So now here we go. So now let's look at our cross section now. Okay, let's look at our cross section. So this is our uh, cross section. So if we were to, if I were to look at our transformation, this is our. Y, Y, and this is our Z, Z. Okay. So this is our Y, Y. This will be our Z, Z. And we are also aware that this dimension over here This is our B, and this dimension over here, this is our A. Okay. So I'll copy this to represent on the right also. Right, so you could recall, right? So this is, we want to find our IZZ, right? So IZZ, Anything that's parallel to the ZZ axis is the width. And anything perpendicular to the ZZ axis is the depth. Okay. So the width for this case is B. The depth is A cubed divided by 12. So the next one we're going to find is we're going to find I, Y, Y. If you got this wrong, the analysis is down the toilet bowl, okay? So anything that's parallel to the axis of interest is Y, Y now is our width. And anything, this is our depth. Okay? So this will be our, so our width is A, B cubed over 12. So now we know, okay? So what we are trying to achieve down here, let, let me get this part across. Let me copy this across. So when I do the question, you will have a better visualization of what we're trying to do. Okay. So what we are trying to accomplish down here is 
I'm going to put a note down here. Is we want to find the L over R ratio first, okay, uh, such that the uh, L over R at the uh, x y plane is it x y plane what are the planes that we have let me see our x y plane and x z plane are the same all right so we want them to be the because now they are not the same because if we look at one, our L over R ratio is much higher. Like for this case, it's on the right hand side. Okay. Well, if we have L over R equal to two, it's on the what? Left hand side. Okay. So we want to align both of them. The L over R ratio has to be the same. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So if we look at IZZ. Okay. So now we have to relate our uh, our our LR ratio. Okay, where where R is. So, so I write this down first. So IZZ. We know IZZ is equal to a RZ square. Okay, where RZ is our radius of gyration okay. so we know that rz squared is equal to izz divided by area okay. so now we calculate so IZZ is equal to BA cube over 12. The area is AB, right? So this will become uh, A squared over 12. So we have our RZ is equal to A divided by square root 12. So now, what we want to find is we want to find the L over R ratio, right? So over here, we have our L for our first one, right? So this, our L is 0 0.7 L divided by A over square root 12. So for this case, this is for our, uh, let me see our plane, our XY plane. So let me write this out. So L over R for XY plane is equal to 0.7 L over A divided by square root 12. Okay. Then we go on the other plane. Okay, so I'm 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 doing the other plane now, right? So I Y Y is equal to A R Y squared. Okay. So R Y is the radius direction about the Y axis or the one on the left is the axis. So we know that R Y squared is equal to I Y Y. over a so we know that i uh, y y is a b cube over 12 multiplied by 1 over a b that's basically divided by uh, area so this will become b squared 
over 12. So we know that our Ry is equal to B over square root 12. Okay. So now we put in our A over R ratio. Now this one is for uh, exact plane. So our L is equal to 2L, right? Our radius is equal to B over square root 12. Okay. So now we want them for optimum dimension, right? So for optimum dimension. So what do I mean by the word optimum? Okay. What do I mean by optimum dimension? So of the optimum dimension, let, let me elaborate. Okay. So the optimum